Hi there, Jeff Nelson of VegSource. Well, Dr. Furman has responded to my recent video, which I called Dr. Furman's Fake Testimonial. In my video, I described a fake weight loss testimonial that Dr. Furman has been using for about 11 years. The subject of this testimonial was a man named Scott Cutchell, who Dr. Furman said lost 331 pounds following a nutritarian diet. In my video, I also discussed how Dr. Furman grossly misrepresents his weight loss research. If you haven't seen my last video, I'm putting a link in the description. Now, rather than show that what I said in my video was inaccurate, Dr. Furman made a 16 minute video in which he attacked my character, accused me of things I didn't do, and made straw man arguments uh, to distract his viewers, basically. In today's video, I will show how Dr. Furman provided no evidence to refute the assertions I made, and I will show how the many claims he made in his video about me are false. If you saw my video, you recall that I made two main assertions. First, I said that the weight loss testimonial for Scott Cushell was fake, as was the story Dr. Furman has been telling to audiences about Scott. And second, I said that Dr. Furman describes the results of his weight loss studies in a deceptive and fraudulent manner, and that he's been doing this repeatedly throughout his career. Now, let's look at my assertion about the weight loss testimonial first. It's relevant to note that this fake testimonial violates FTC guidelines. This testimonial from Scott does not reflect the reality of Scott's experience, and it never did under its various evolving iterations. In June of 2005, Scott says he did a detox that he learned from the book Eat to Live, Dr. Furman's book. He quit the detox a week prematurely because he couldn't tolerate it any longer. He then reverted to his prior eating habits. A little over four months later, he came up with a plan to lose weight by designing a diet which involved restricting himself to 1,000 to 1,200 calories per day and exercising vigorously by riding a bike up to 50 miles a day. That's what he did, and those are the extraordinary measures that he took. This is the FTC's page called Guides Concerning the Use of Endorsements and Testimonials and Advertising. The FTC says regarding testimonials, the endorsement may not be presented out of context or reworded so as to distort in any way the endorser's opinion or experience with the product. But as you saw in my first video, this is what Dr. Furman and his team did, according to Scott. Regarding weight loss programs, the FTC endorsements must reflect typical results or else you must reveal the limited and truly exceptional circumstances under which the person giving an endorsement achieved the result. The example the FTC gives is someone drinking a weight loss drink and losing weight but not disclosing excessive measures like Oh, they only ate raw vegetables, and they exercised a great deal. Despite the fact that Dr. Furman and his team were fully aware of Scott's severe calorie restriction and his grueling daily bike program, neither of these were ever mentioned in Scott's ever-changing testimonials or in Dr. Furman's public presentations. Not once. Okay, as part of Dr. Furman's proof that Scott lost his 331 pounds by following a nutritarian diet. In his video, Dr. Furman shows seven documents. I'm going to go through these quickly one by one. You're going to see that all of these documents are distractions because none of them actually speaks to the issue of the specific content of Scott's testimonial, namely that he followed a nutritarian diet. So here's the first. This is a release from 2010, which Dr. Furman says Scott signed. It grants Dr. Furman permission to use Scott's testimonial in the second edition of Eat to Live. So what did Scott's testimonial say? Well, here is his full quote as it appears in Dr. Furman's book, assuming it wasn't changed after he signed it. You can freeze the frame to read it if you wish. I discovered Eat to Live and decided to commit to it. After years of trying fad diets to lose weight, I was no longer interested in the D word. Eat to Live was not about a goal weight. It was about doing what was healthy for my body. I thought the results would follow, and they did. By February of 2009, I had lost 333 pounds and had my health and life back. I started exercising again. For me, biking made complete sense, as was a way to move around and so on. So this all conforms to what Scott said in his email to me, that he liked the book, Eat to Live, 
that he found good information in it, and that he did the detox, which was in the book. However, this quote is set up in a way to make the reader believe that Scott started bicycling after he lost the weight, rather than in order to lose the weight. So this is misleading and, of course, appears to be another FTC guideline violation, not to share all that Scott did to get his great results. The second document Dr. Furman showed is another release from 2011 signed by Scott for use in videos and photos that Dr. Furman might use for promotional purposes. The third document is a page from Scott's personal blog in 2005 called Day One, Year Zero, in which Dr. Furman highlighted the part where Scott described eating fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, cooked veggies, beans, and one ounce of raw nuts. Now, Dr. Furman claimed that this is proof that Scott was following a nutritarian diet. But what Dr. Furman did not highlight on this page was the most important line of all, and that is the one that puts everything into context. It's the first line. Scott wrote, today is day one of six weeks of detoxification. So I already told you in my last video that before deciding to go on his own diet, Scott did the detox for me to live. So there's absolutely nothing new on this page or in this blog post, and there's nothing that shows that Scott adopted a nutritarian diet here. This post is entirely about the detox that he did. Scott has written a number of times that he could only tolerate Dr. Furman's detox for five out of the recommended six weeks. Dr. Furman's detox was unsustainable for Scott. So he says he stopped after the fifth week. He wrote about the detox. When that ended for us, we went right back to our old habits of takeout and delivery. So Scott resumed his old diet and didn't start his weight loss program for another four months. And he tells the story of the guy who built his bike and how this guy played a key role in getting Scott to start his diet. I'm going to put a link to this seven page article from 2008, which is written by Scott and his wife, where they describe Scott's weight loss journey in great detail. Scott mentions Dr. Furman only once in all of these seven pages in this paragraph here, talking about his five week detox experience. But he doesn't mention Dr. Furman anywhere else except when he's talking about the aborted detox. The fourth document Dr. Furman showed is a newspaper article from 2008 about Scott's weight loss. Dr. Furman cites this part of the article. Scott essentially ate the same thing every day, three base meals developed off research from the book Eat to Live by Joel Furman, a New Jersey physician. The food equaled a daily dose of about 1,200 calories and provided all nutrients and so on. So here Dr. Furman is showing an article that says Scott read his book and quote, developed meals off research from the book, unquote. So again, we see that Scott developed his own diet. Uh, there are no direct quotes from Scott here in this article describing what he ate. There's no mention of the words nutritarian diet or nutrient dense or nutritional excellence. In my video, I showed you Scott's words exactly as he told them to me and other journalists. We know that for sure Scott ate an extremely low calorie diet to lose weight. And for the first time ever, Dr. Furman is acknowledging this publicly. If you saw my video, you'll recall that I showed multiple clips of Dr. Furman presenting Scott's story to audiences at public events. What's interesting is that while we hear Dr. Furman repeat the same script over and over again about how Scott lost 331 pounds following a nutritarian diet, we never hear Dr. Furman mention a word about the fact that Scott was eating between 1,000 and 1,200 calories or that he was riding a bike 30 to 50 miles every day. Now let's look at the final three documents that Dr. Furman showed in his video. Here is number five, an email from one of Dr. Furman's staff members to Scott, asking Scott if he wanted to make any changes in an article they were posting about him on Dr. Furman's blog. Dr. Furman said that Scott didn't respond to this email, and according to Dr. Furman, this meant that Scott must have agreed with everything that they would be saying about him in the article, that he agreed it was true because he didn't respond. So the sixth document Dr. Furman offers is a screenshot of Dr. Furman's blog in which that article about Scott was posted. Now, nowhere on this page is Scott quoted as saying he followed a nutritarian diet. He also does not use the words nutritional excellence or high nutrient meal plan. These are all words attributed to him in the fake testimonial. In this article, he doesn't discuss at all what he ate. You can read it for yourself. The link is listed below. And here is the final document Dr. Furman presented, document number seven, an email from Scott saying he was interested in being a mentor for others who were trying to lose weight. 
Okay, so I just showed everything that Dr. Furman presented as proof that Scott followed a nutritarian diet to lose 331 pounds. Did you notice what was missing? The only thing Dr. Furman didn't show us was the testimonial that was the subject of my last video, the one that I said was a fabrication, the one Dr. Furman has been displaying on his website for about a decade, the one that is written in the first person with Scott telling his story and using the words high nutrient meal plan and nutritional excellence and the phrase, the nutritarian diet plan is designed to include everything a human craves. There are foods that are hot, cold, salty, creamy, and so on. Dr. Furman could have made a video which was 16 seconds rather than 16 minutes long if he had actual proof that Scott followed his diet. All Dr. Furman needed to do was to show us the original email that Scott sent to him back in 2008, in which Scott said he lost 331 pounds following the Nutritarian diet. If Dr. Furman had that, he could show it on screen, and that would be the end of the story. But mysteriously, the only email we saw from Scott was the one where Scott expressed interest in helping others. In addition to that irrelevant email, Dr. Furman gave us six other documents that tell us zero about what Scott ate. Dr. Furman showed us everything except Scott telling us that he lost 331 pounds following Dr. Furman's nutritional excellence. Once Scott started his diet, he came up with a formula to describe his weight loss philosophy. Here it is. I am still obeying the laws of eat better plus eat less of it equals shrink. Before I move on to discussing Dr. Furman's misrepresentation of his research, a quick point about the Nutritarian Diet. As Dr. Furman explains in his most recent research article, the Nutritarian Diet guidelines are as follows. One half pound each of raw and cooked vegetables daily, mushrooms and allium vegetables daily, at least one cup of legumes per day, one to two ounces of nuts and seeds per day, including high omega-3 varieties, three to four servings of fresh and or frozen fruit daily, limit grains and starchy vegetables to one serving per day, avoid added oils. Well, Scott didn't eat this way. In addition, Dr. Furman emphasizes that a nutritarian diet does not involve cutting calories, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Here he is in his PBS special, The End of Dieting. Most diets have you restrict calories, struggle to eat less, or recommend some ratio of fat, carbohydrate, or protein that they claim will help you lose weight. Let's look at these concepts, because they're the problem, not the solution. If you try to eat less, you get even less micronutrients in your tissues, which just drives you into an uncontrollable binge. That doesn't work because our bodies are starving for those nutrients. And this is an article from his website entitled Questions and Answers About the Nutritarian Diet. Question, do I have to count calories? Answer, not at all. You'll eat until you're satisfied all the time. Scott has described exactly what he ate every day, and I covered this in my previous video. We also know that Scott severely limited and either counted or estimated his calories. We can see that Scott clearly never followed a nutritarian diet, and Dr. Furman has come up with zero evidence to refute my assertion that Scott's testimonial is fake on his website. Regarding Scott, Dr. Furman in his video said, Possibly Scott has some personal or business reason why he no longer desires to credit my work with any part of his success. Well, of course, Scott does credit Dr. Furman for the five-week detox he did. He says he likes the book Eat to Live, but he was never on a nutritarian eating plan, as he has said repeatedly. Scott's story has been consistent. He went on the detox. He went off the detox. Uh, he wrote in detail of in 2008 about what he did. He designed his own diet. He rode his bike. Scott told other journalists from for many years that he followed his own diet. And those stories have been published in the media. So he hasn't changed anything. And there's no indication Scott has been involved in some business where he needed to alter his story in order to make more money. What's been altered is the testimonial. The real story of Scott is amazing. It's Incredible, it's highly inspirational. Scott is someone to be admired. He went from being virtually unable to physically leave his home for three years due to his obesity to working to lose the weight and then going on to help others to do the same thing following his own principles. Now I'm going to quickly go through Dr. Furman's response to my assertion that he misrepresents the findings of his research. Dr. Furman says I'm being unfair, and he starts out by talking about his 2008 weight loss study. 
If you're interested in the full story on the 2008 study, I made this video that you can watch to find out what actually took place. I talked about this as well briefly in my last video on the fake testimonial. The take home points are that Dr. Furman's researcher made gross miscalculations and changed the gender of one of the participants. And Dr. Furman completely misrepresented the results of the study on multiple occasions spanning several years. He said that the average weight loss was over 50 pounds and not a single participant gained back any weight at all. If you watch my videos, you'll see how grotesque these claims are. And what's ironic is that while the weight loss results were dismal, all of the patients had literally been handpicked by Dr. Furman. Furman next talks about his 2015 weight loss study, which was based on anonymous responses to an internet survey. Rather than debate the merits of the study, uh, which didn't have any controls, it didn't control for any confounding factors like a legitimate study would, let's focus on how Dr. Furman represents the results of his study. To get the full details about Dr. Furman's misrepresentations of this study, please check out my last video. The important points to remember here is that on multiple occasions, Dr. Furman described this survey, which had 813 obese participants, either as a study of 75 people, which it wasn't, or that all obese participants lost over 50 pounds, which also wasn't true. Next, Dr. Furman talks about his involvement in his 2014 DHA study. I made a video about this study as well, and you can take a look at that video if you want more information. My video showed how Dr. Furman was not listed as an author on the published study, despite the fact that he was listed as the principal investigator for the entire duration of the study on his own website. So he's never gotten around to explaining why this was so. I didn't mention the DHA study in my video on Scott's fake testimonial, but Dr. Furman brought it up in his recent video. Here is what he said. And I had the intention of being part of the study when it was first conceived. But as soon as this group of volunteer researchers was assembled, we all thought it more ethical for me to have no part in it. Dr. Furman wants us to believe that the research team all got together and said, Gee, Dr. Furman, for ethical reasons, it's best for you to have no part in this study. Therefore, to prove to everyone that you have absolutely no involvement, let's use your branded DHA supplement in a study on DHA supplementation. Let's give the participants your branded DHA supplement to test it. If it's, we can find that it raises their DHA levels, there's simply no other way to distance you from the study, Dr. Furman. I'll let you decide if that makes sense. Finally, let's take a look at the claims that Dr. Furman made specifically about me in his video. Dr. Furman begins his video by stating that he's a victim and that he's been slandered and that I'm on some sort of hate campaign toward him. That's false. Dr. Furman has chosen to discuss his program publicly. He seems to think that he should be exempt from criticism and that his opinions on nutrition should simply be accepted without question. I am a journalist and I have looked at the research and I have compared what the research says with what Dr. Furman is telling people it says. And I let people see the discrepancy between what those are and decide for themselves whether Dr. Furman's words should be trusted. That's my job. Next, Dr. Furman claims that I'm a vicious bully and he says that I even forced another doctor to take down a video containing nutritional information that disagreed with him. Otherwise, he would post a smear campaign of false information against him. Now, Dr. Furman doesn't tell us who the alleged doctor is or what the false information is or how I supposedly bullied him. This never happened. Dr. Furman goes on to say that he has unnamed colleagues who are hesitant to speak publicly about scientific studies for fear of being attacked by me. But again, there's no evidence provided for any of this. We're just supposed to believe Dr. Furman because he says it's true and it's impossible to respond to accusations like this. Next, Dr. Furman said about his recent article in the IJDRP that used the same data set from the article he published four years ago. He claims that I tried to get his study retracted. He already sent a complaint letter to the journal it was published in, attempting to get the journal to retract the study, but it did not work. He lied to them in his complaint. Dr. Furman makes two false statements here. 
I never sent a complaint letter to this journal, and I could not have lied in a complaint letter that I didn't send. In fact, a viewer of my VegSource videos, a vegan medical doctor, was the one who sent a letter to the International Journal of Disease Prevention and Reversal. And then this vegan doctor contacted me soon after to tell me that he did, and here is the email that he sent to the journal with his personal information blacked out. After this vegan doctor contacted me and forwarded this email, I then wrote to Dr. Williams, who is the editor-in-chief of the journal, to tell him that someone had brought this letter to my attention and that I wanted to ask Dr. Williams a few questions for a story that I was thinking of doing. Dr. Williams wrote back to me that several months after publication, we indeed received a question about duplicate publication self-plagiarism regarding the article you reference. We temporarily removed the article from the online site until we reviewed both publications in detail. So you can see that Dr. Williams confirms that he had already received an email with someone else at the time that I contacted him with my inquiry. I asked questions, but I never attempted to get the article retracted. Dr. Furman should have checked his facts with the editor there before he decided to make a completely false public accusation against me. Then Dr. Furman says, He also sent a complaint letter to the journal which published a study reporting the omega-3 index in 166 vegan subjects, claiming I, quote, ghost wrote, close quote, the study and was hiding my involvement with it. This is a total fabrication and a smear. I have no idea what Dr. Furman is talking about. I encourage Dr. Furman to contact the editor of whatever this journal is that he's referring to before making more slanderous accusations. I've had no contact with whatever journal Dr. Furman is referring to. In regards to his DHA study, Dr. Furman states, And he also posted a video trying to besmirch my reputation, suggesting I paid off the researchers who did the study and I wrote and faked the results of that study. This is completely false. Please show me where I said anything remotely like this. Next, he says, He removes and hides all comments trying to correct his errors and not supporting his attacks against me to create hate to try to destroy my credibility. Again, this is false. For example, here is a comment from Randy Carbone, who is the vice president of Dr. Furman Online. Here she is on Dr. Furman's staff page. She's apparently in charge of public relations. She has posted a number of comments on my channel complaining about my video. Not one has been removed. There are dozens of negative comments from another associate of Dr. Furman's, someone named Jeff, who posts under the name Vegan Linked. He appears to have helped Dr. Furman to make his most recent video, and he posted that video on his YouTube channel. He's been posting up a storm defending Dr. Furman. Again, none of this has been removed. I do remove comments that involve vulgarity, insults, profanity, as do many other YouTube channels. Despite Dr. Furman's claim, I'm not censoring people with a different opinion from mine, uh, but just as you saw, his employees and his business associates have been very busy posting. Next, he said this. Yet he takes clips of me and manipulates them to make me look foolish and that I'm scamming people. Well, this is false. I don't manipulate clips. I show Dr. Furman exactly how he has been recorded elsewhere. If he looks foolish, then there is likely an alternative explanation. He also says, He pulls them out of context and edits them to change the meaning. Now, this is false. Why doesn't Dr. Furman show me one example of what I'm supposedly doing? Otherwise, this is just more smears and false accusations. Dr. Furman states, He's not practiced medicine for 30 years and helped thousands to recover their health. I've always made it clear that I'm a journalist, not a doctor. But you don't have to be a doctor in order to contrast someone's words with what the evidence says about a particular issue. Usually, the people who report on false advertising violations and similar offenses are investigators rather than doctors. Dr. Furman is not only a physician, but a public figure by his own choice. Doctors need to be held to a higher standard than most others because they occupy a privileged role in our society. When a doctor violates ethical guidelines, it's important to bring the behavior to light to avoid demeaning the medical profession, uh, and creating distrust between physicians and patients. Thank you for taking the time to watch all the way to the end. That's it. Please give it a like. Please subscribe. I'll see you soon on the next one. Thanks.